Welcome to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. Joan and Janet are subtle energy empaths in the field of consciousness. Their passion is to support your evolutionary growth and change. Join them as they talk about our individual and collective evolutions. Explore what living consciously with energetic awareness means in our daily lives. Access with them a state of grace. There is no time, no space. Feel the warmth and acceptance and opening into infinite possibilities. Combining a broad collection of modalities and personal experiences, they share with humility and humor their appreciation for the body, mind, spirit connections that we call life. Now, here is Joan Newcomb and Janet Barrett. Welcome to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. We are your co-hosts. I'm Joan Newcomb coming to you from Tacoma, Washington, and my partner Janet Barrett is coming to us from Portland, Oregon. Hello, everyone, and welcome We have a great show for you today. We have a special guest that we'll be telling you about in just a second, but we want to bring your attention to uh, that we have a conscious conference call coming up. Ever wish that you'd like to be with us during our chats? Well, this is a chance to get up close and personal with us, and you can ask us your questions and and just be like you're in the studio with us um, next Thursday, May 28th at 7 p.m., uh, and you can email us at ConsciousWithJoanAndJanet at gmail.com to, jo- to join us. Uh, anything you want to chime in about that, Janet? Well, I think it's just we're really looking forward to it to maybe give you a different perspective on things that you're noticing and that we notice when we address ourselves as consciousness and spirits having this wonderful dance in a human experience so we look forward to uh people participating and there'll be a lot of ebb and flow and not a lot it'll be a lot of spontaneous how about that if you like the spontaneous come join us all right um and real quick uh tell us about your website janet oh all right so if you uh uh, Janet and Beyond dot com, all one word, and we got lots of great things going on there. If you subscribe to the wonderful blog, I'm going to take credit. I have a wonderful blog, as does Joan, and you sign up for the weekly blog, you can get a twenty five dollar discount on your first session with me. That's there, and uh, we got uh, Joan's got books and all kinds of things on her website. What else you got there, Joan? Yeah, you can find out more about me at my website. It's joan-nukem.com, and I have a new client special. Uh, if you click on consultations, you can find out all about it. Um, and um, and there's other groovy stuff, too, so just go find out. <laughs> it's a mystery. Go find out. Um, so I want to talk about our, our guest today. I'm really yes, excited yes, about yes, this. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, uh, yes we do. I, 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 I have... Um, I took classes from him 15 years ago. Um, he, he expanded my universe amazingly. Um, he also, he, he originally expanded Fintorn's universe amazingly as well. Um, David Spangler is a visionary author and spiritual teacher and Lorian priest. He's a lecturer and teacher since 1964, and he's written numerous books, which include The Call, Everyday Miracles, Blessing, The Art and Practice, Manifestation, Creating the Life You Love, and Incarnational Spirituality. And from 1970 to 1973, David was co-director of the Fintown Findhorn Foundation <laughs> in Northern Scotland. And he's also co-founder of the Lorian Association and a fellow of the Lindisfarne Association. And currently, he's the director of the Lorian Center for Incarnational Spirituality and is the primary faculty for the Path of the Chalice program. And he's married uh, and his lovely wife, and he have four children, and they live in Washington. And couple websites for him is davidspangler.com and laurianassociation.com. So we'll be talking with him and finding out more about um, incarnational spirituality and consciousness. Oh, goody. That sounds great. Should we bring him on now or are we? what's our timing on this? Let me see. Well, you know what? We... I was I was keeping to our original timing, and there is no time or space as consciousness. So look what happened. We can why don't why don't we bring him on right now for a quick hello and uh, talk about heart space, and then we'll go to the commercial break at the normal right. time. Okay. Are you there, David? Hello, David Spangler. David Spangler. David Spangler. <laughs> Conjure him up. <laughs> oh, yes, well, 
here I am in company with with Beetlejuice. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, welcome, David. Thank you for joining us in our in our play. We really appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Oh, definitely. And you have such a wonderful background, and we are so tickled to have you add to our sense of what consciousness is about on all its different levels in life. And um, we're looking forward definitely to hearing all about what kind of things. And I have to comment, I see that you're married with four children, and I would think that gives you a great experience of consciousness. <laughs> yeah, well, there's... I have to say, there's nothing like it. I, I, uh, I always think of my family as my primary teachers. So, mm -hmm. if uh, not to mention everything else, so yes, that that's been a major part of my life, and I've been very blessed with wonderful kids and an absolutely fabulous partner in Julie. Mm, how nice. You can feel that, can't you, everybody? To all our listeners, this is a man who really has a sense of depth, right, and and heart. And our languages may not match up, but our heart does. So uh, we want to thank David for where we take it. And we're always on this show in conversation from what we hope is a heart-centered awareness. And... So do we want to get more into that now, Joan? I have even no idea of time. I'm just really surpri surprised. Not surprised, I suppose. Where where are we on our clock? Well, let me see. It uh, depends on <laughs> what reality. Depends on what universe, universe that we're in. So well, um, this is how do I feel? Um, how do we feel about this? This is much more improvisational than we normally get, but um, um <laughs> Why, well, why don't you explain a little bit about heart space, what that is, and then we'll go to the commercial okay. break and then drop into it when we come All back. right. So for our reference, heart space is universe, unified consciousness. It is the place where individuality blends into the all. So um, in holding that resonance and we look to where we call to be authentic, and not that we're never authentic, not authentic, but in the sense of the difference between mind and heart and making choices. And we're kind of a brain-oriented society these days, and our thinking takes over. And this is about in this space that we gather where we lose the individuality and we just experience the spectrum of what is possible. So as we visit that spot, how would you refer to that, David, in your frame of reference? What, 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 are, what are your words about that? Well, they wouldn't be that different from what you shared. I, um, I would say that uh, we're dropping into a place of uh, connection with all that is as a Mm -hmm. As one friend of mine puts it, it's the place where the the all and the small and the small and the all mm -hmm. all get together. <laughs> I love that. Oh, that's okay. great. That's yeah, great. it's it's kind of cute, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's a powerful place of of a heartfelt connection with the world that's around you. Well, you you focus a lot on what we would call subtle energies, and can you explain that just a little bit to people that maybe are not familiar with that? Uh, sure. So, um, think of the world as divided into two interactive but separate ecologies. And one ecology is the world that we see every day with our five senses, and it's very familiar to us. And the other ecology is equally part of the world, but we generally do not see it. Most people don't see it or are not um, that aware of it. But it's a world of um, different frequencies of life, of different frequencies of consciousness. I call it the subtle dimensions. Um, it's the non-physical half of the world. It's, I often think of it as Earth's second ecology. And uh, because I my background is that of a biologist. I, um, I tend to look at these subtle domains as uh, 
another environment filled with organisms of a particular kind. Uh, they don't have physical bodies, but they certainly have life and consciousness. That's great. We're, we're going to pick up this more right after our commercial break because um, it's as obviously a deep subject. So, um, so stay tuned as uh, we're talking with David Spangler about consciousness and incarnational spirituality, and Janet will bring us into a state of grace right after the break. Are you ready to take a quantum leap in your life? Joan Newcomb is a conscious mastery coach who empowers you to navigate life from your own inner wisdom using energy techniques. Contact her through her website, joan-newcomb.com, and take conscious mastery of your life today. That's joan-newcomb.com. Would you like a fresh approach to the challenges you're dealing with? Janet Barrett is a subtle energy empath. Feeling the energies present in your myths and language, she offers a supportive, non-judgmental viewpoint. Experience new ways to relate to and release the energies in those stories. Receive a $25 discount on your first session. Email Janet for an appointment at JanetB at JanetAndBeyond.com. Come explore with Janet. New possibilities for a joy-filled life. You are listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. To reach our program, please send questions and comments to Conscious with Joan and Janet at gmail.com. That's Conscious with Joan and Janet at gmail.com. Now, back to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. Welcome back. You're listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet, and I'm your host, Joan, along here with Janet, and we are talking with David Spangler about consciousness and incarnational spirituality and other groovy things. Groovy. We're already in the groove. <laughs> well, okay, you still there, David? We got you. Yes, I am. <laughs> okay. Well, everyone, let's just take a moment, and David so embodies being present in what we call heart and you can feel he's already there and he probably works from this place because he's been at it a long time and he lives his daily experience out of there which is all any of us could hope to emulate um but it, for those of us that are sitting up here busy in whatever we're busy in let's just take a moment to let that fall away and so just notice take a breath relax those shoulders and Okay, allow that part of you that's busy, they can be busy, but this part of you that listens, just allow it to drop in. And today, it kind of feels like just a willingness to be present. So just drop in, go to that sense of heart, location, notice that, then go notice that emotional terrain around that. And whatever you're noticing emotionally, just allow it to be the show, not attached. And then just go into the essence, the core of all, which is where we are looking to always come from and be authentic. And authentic's an interesting term. Um, it seems to be showing up today. But as David is holding point, you can feel him out there. This is just so lovely. And into potential and what is possible and what all the infinite variety of us all. And let's see what shows up today as we talk about consciousness with David Spangler. What you got, David? What do you notice? I, yes, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Is there anything in particular that you notice in, the, in this moment that you can articulate? Well, I definitely notice the the way in which you were leading us into a, you know, a delightful place of letting go of the things that might otherwise keep us from feeling our presence in the place where we are. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, I, it was just a time for me of tuning in and supporting the, you know, the, the enterprise that we're about here in this interview. Supporting listeners. So, as the listeners now, Joan, what are you noticing, sweetie? Oh, I um actually I was I I'm preoccupied with another energy, so I I decided to bring them into heart space too. 
<laughs> ah, great. Okay. And just okay. watching how that's unfolding. So that that was there was a divided focus, but you know everybody, you know everybody who is listening. And, and and ever will listen is in the space with us as well. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. And I think probably those energies, because David has such a strong resonance here, is that things will show up and in each of us that are really like, ooh, that feels good. And so <laughs> we might be all surprised pleasantly in some way. So uh, what what is it that you might like to share about, David? Because this is just an open-ended conversation of what 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 we were present to we really look to support being present in this moment and since we're tracking lots of different people um what comes to mind and what would you like to share with us and these with our listeners well it occurs to me that um that your listeners might not know what incarnational spirituality is ooh okay and, go and, for it uh, i thought that I should um, explain it a little bit. Okay. So, so basically, do. incarnational spirituality is a, it's two things. It's a, it's a worldview. It's a way of thinking about oneself and about the world. And it's also a, a toolbox. It has a number of uh, different ways that a person can can use to engage more productively and creatively with with their world, but essentially incarnational spirituality. Um, I think I I would put it this way that that we we come into this world and we're not exiles from our true home someplace else, and we don't come primarily as students seeking to learn and graduate to someplace else. And we don't come as debtors, you know, seeking to work off past obligations. We really come as generative sources of life, that each of us, standing in our sovereignty and in what I call our self-light, is a generative source. And, you know, the the metaphor I use is that we are like uh, generating stations. You know, if I were to build a power station and that power station feeds energy into a larger grid. And each of us has that capability. And we come to um, really to serve the evolving life of this world as a whole. So you could say that we are caretakers of the world. We may not be doing the greatest job of that at the moment, but it is what I feel motivates the soul to ultimately to take incarnation. Uh, you could say that we are incubators of new life within the world. And I call it incarnational spirituality because the focus is not on achieving transcendent states or transpersonal places, but rather on uh, looking at what is the spiritual nature of the physical world and the everyday world in which uh, all of us have our lives. And indeed, it, there's a great deal in this domain that is that is filled with, with wonder and power and life. We are surrounded by life, uh, both physical and subtle, and we have the capacity to partner with that. And when we do partner with it, that's when miracles can happen. I love how you're putting that because it's not about escape, is it, to you? No, absolutely it, not. This is so much uh, uh, metaphysics, and I don't want to draw anything. It's just that so much of life is organized around this is a hell of a place to be, and I need to get out of here as quick as possible. <laughs> and and then there's the, well, this is a painful place to be, so I don't want to be here. Or what you're addressing is that the wonder of life in being in this moment and really about being present and organizing. What are you noticing, Joan? Um, well, I, I was, I was reveling in his words and images and what just struck me was, um, there's this Buddhist meditation where you breathe in the misery of the world and then you breathe out compassion. I forgot mm. the name, Bodhis, Bodhisattva. Uh, and I, and, um, 
and that's I was struck by the, the that we're generative sources of light and that we you know we do we come in we, we're consciousness manifesting into this denser through these denser bodies into form and um, and we forget that we can generate the energy so we we're not just absorbing the energy and having to get it out of our space or something mm-hmm. like that but it's more that we can generate um um we can set energy levels is what i'm i'm also seeing and um um so that that's a i also you know i i've been to finthorn three tr- times and and uh follow that and uh also michelle small writes work too and um so co-creating with nature working with the unseen energies um as the creators that we are is what i'm seeing is um is a very powerful standpoint do you notice that most people hold this reference that the world is something to be is less than a wonderful place to be david or are you seeing someone change in that or well i certainly who run into people who are, um, you know, suffering and having a hard time of one kind or another and for whom the world does not appear to be a friendly place. Mm -hmm. But much more, I run into people who um, have internalized the sense of their own powerlessness and Mm -hmm. that they themselves are either not worthy people or that they themselves are causes of the um, the fact that their worlds are not um, working as well as they could, and and so part of what incarnational spirituality offers is just a redefinition of who we are as people, mm-hmm. because you know how a person uh, defines who they are affects how they act and react in their lives, mm-hmm. so. So part of what I try to do is to help them to redefine themselves. And uh, But it's not simply a philosophical position. Um, uh, so um, a number of years ago, almost 20 years ago now, um, well, first I should say that I've been um, in touch with the subtle environment and non-physical beings for as long as I can remember. It's it's just something that I grew up with. So um, having conversation with uh, individuals who don't have physical bodies is is not uh, unusual for me. So about 20 years ago, um, a, a being um, uh, came, and uh, he, was, he was what I call one of my inner colleagues. And I was at the time thinking about the challenges that humanity was facing and uh, the problems that exist in the world. And and this fellow uh, popped into the room and said, well, uh, consider this, um, that the challenge of humanity is not that you are not, it's not that you are too incarnated. Your challenge is that you're not incarnated enough. <laughs> and And this was a very unusual statement and rather provocative and it it got me to thinking about just what was the nature of incarnation and what did he mean by that and uh, he he definitely did not mean well you're not physical enough but he he definitely also meant that uh, we are not connected enough with the world around us and uh, and in many ways we isolate ourselves uh, psychologically and and uh, in other ways energetically that don't allow us to participate as fully as we could in in the flow of life in this world so um so incarnational spirituality really is the result of all the research that I've done. I mean, I think of myself, I started out in my 20s as uh, as somebody who was going to become a a research biologist. I was interested in molecular biology. And uh, when I was 20, my 
inner colleague said, well, it's time for you to leave school and do something else. And um, this was something of a surprise. Uh, and it took me some months to come around to agreeing that, that in fact, this is what I needed to do. Uh, all This whole story is in my book, Apprentice to Spirit. But the long and the short of it is that I did leave school and I started um, teaching in Los Angeles. But I've always brought to the work that I do the sensibility of a of a researcher. In in a way, that's what I am. I I um, I explore things in the subtle worlds and then share my field notes and usually share them through the classes that I've taught and and obviously the books that I write. So incarnational spirituality initially grew out of this research into the processes of incarnation, what's actually involved to get us here in as a physical being, and uh, and observing some of these processes and and understanding them made clear just how uh, real it is that we are a generative sources if we choose to be. We're each like um, small stars. And just like the stars in the sky, you have bright stars and dim stars. So it's not like everyone is equal, but everyone is equally radiant uh, to some degree. And it's possible by um, a, working with one's radiance in a conscious way to, to increase this. So that's um, that's yeah. how incarnational spirituality got its start, and essentially what it is that I've been exploring. Joan, what I'm noticing is is David's acceptance and permission to allow himself to have his experience, and that, and for our listeners who he describes so well his own experiences with the unseen and subtle forces, and that um, that's something we all need to be okay about. I even had a client this morning who was like, oh, describing uh, from an uncomfortable place that he had this sense at different times in his life that something interacted with him and it took him in a different direction. And it was about me allow, creating a place for him to understand that um, that was a part of his experience of wonder, that there was information beyond him that was that was available to him and whether it came in the form of something or in a sense of of something he had no awareness of there was an experience and i think we always want our listeners to have that to give themselves permission and there is the degree between um levels of reality right you know it's like oh well it's just in my head and i need to be a clinic clinical or in the sense that no this is coming from a heart place you can feel that with david that 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 voice that sense that energy that he's interacting with was not coming from out of his head but in that heart space he could hear it in that stillness and in the sacredness, he made those choices. What are you tracking? Yeah, well, well, I was following David. I was following you along with with your story and and you know your interaction with your inner beings and um, you know the challenge that we're not incarnated enough. You know, I come from a metaphysical training and background that really emphasized, you know, grounding, but it it simultaneously uh, emphasized space, which was um, which 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 really isolated from the rest of the world. And it was like, you know, people in your space or out of your space. And one of the miraculous things when I started uh, uh, learning from you, David, was you, you said, you know, everyone we interact with expands our universe. And and that just dissolved, you know, 15 years of training. It was wonderful. <laughs> and so I, I love this idea about we're not incarnated enough. We're not interacting enough on the multiple uh, levels that are available um, in this realm. And, um, and so, actually, I would ask you this. It's like we are each small stars. So, um, you know, how, how do we work to increase our radiance? 
Well, yeah, this is a good question. And I was just thinking as you were speaking, uh, you know, there's so many different um, uh, voices in our world that tell us the multiple ways in which we're broken and how we need fixing. <laughs> yeah. And I, I realized yeah. that, um, that I might inadvertently be supplying another voice in that direction because what this gentleman was saying to me, that is my inner colleague, he was not uh, complaining and he wasn't saying, well, you're broken. He was basically saying uh, it would be the same as if, uh, if I had a friend at a swimming pool and, uh, and I was in the water and he was just you know, putting his toe in the water and, and was afraid of getting wet all over. There's nothing at all wrong with him. It's just he hasn't made the choice to fully enter the water. And, uh, and so the, the premise of incarnational spirituality is not based on any idea that the human being is broken fundamentally. Mm. I mean, we can break ourselves in a number of ways that I'm sure we're all familiar with, but that's not part of our basic nature. So it's not... So it's not like, well, I, I need to run out now and figure out how to be more incarnated. Because in effect, we, uh, we have everything we need. It's more a matter of opening up to the world. I mean, when you folks talk about heart space and entering into heart space, I mean, that's, that's essentially one of the major steps in, in stepping into a fuller incarnation. And uh, the idea of becoming more radiant, you know, it's kind of like, think of yourself as a, milk, a milkman, uh, and you're going down the street, and you've got a truck full of milk, and uh, and people can come out to you and say, oh, I'd like a bottle of milk, or I'd like two bottles of milk, and before long, all your milk is being distributed, but it's not like you're running up to their door and knocking on the door and saying, here you have to have this milk. Uh, they're recognizing that you have something and they're, at some part of them is asking for it and wanting you to share it. So if your heart is open and you're uh, approaching the world in a loving way, or at least an accepting way, you know, you've, you've said, well, okay, I'm going to get wet. I'm going to step into this pool. So now you see here we are mixing metaphors. And so <laughs> I'm a milkman <laughs> stepping into the pool. Um, a milk once I do that, um, <laughs> the world draws out of me. You know, it's not like I have to to work to stoke some inner fire to become more radiant. It's more that uh, the world, by its very need and also by its very um, desire to co-create with me, will provide the kindling that makes my fire grow stronger. It'll draw that radiance out of me if I'm open to the world. And, and, uh, and it's that openness that is important. And that's part of what you folks have been talking about with the heart space. Well, and I think uh, what I notice in that is the opening to the world is really the letting go of what keeps you separate. What, what with our stories, those perceptions we have about who we are and what we've become and how they limit us and keep us in, at that distance. And, well, yes. you know, at, I would and, agree with that, but I wouldn't use the word separate because, okay. um, forgive me for interrupting. No, I just, no, no, no. <laughs> what word would you, would I, you um, use? I definitely feel it's letting go of what we fear and letting mm -hmm. go, mm -hmm. just as you were saying, of the things that we hold in our minds and hearts that mm -hmm. make us afraid of ourselves and afraid of others and critical of ourselves and critical of others and so on. But, um, but for me, separateness is actually a gift. Um, there's a, a, and separateness is not the same as divisiveness. Separateness mm -hmm. is, for mm -hmm. me, simply the ability to be different. And because you and I are different, we can bring into being uh, insights that neither of us would have on our own. 
Here right. we are having this conversation, and this conversation is a, a wonderful example of differences working co-creatively together. And mm-hmm. it's because you're not me and I'm not you that this can happen. So mm-hmm. part of the teaching of incarnational spirituality is to honor um, our our sovereignty, our unique individuality, that, that in a way everything rests on that. But along with that sovereignty comes uh, connectedness. And so I, I bring my unique individuality into engagement with the world around me, and that will change me, as you said. Uh, everyone I meet uh, introduces me to a new universe and alters the one in which I live. But I do the same for them, and mm-hmm. and that's a very powerful thing. It's 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 why we have each other, so that it's like each of us is an eye, and we have all these millions of eyes looking out on creation and seeing what no single eye would be able to see. And that's the delight and the joy of life, don't you think? I, absolutely. And if we don't fear each other, then right. you know, then we right. can benefit from what we share with each other. I can say, hey, my eye sees this, and you can say, and my eye sees this. And, uh, and we might not ag- agree, but in that not seeing the same thing, if we're open to it, we both can learn, and then we find that we are companions in seeing. Mm-hmm. Um, our, well, see, you're embracing that we all have a viewpoint. <laughs> at, yes, I do. Difference yeah. to me is very important. You know, something yeah. something I hear with on the, I I hear in all of this too is it's it's the the, the dichotomy between um, the the small self. Who 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 feels powerless? Who and really, I would describe that as the the physical self that isn't going to make it out of this lifetime alive. So it's very concerned with survival. But as opposed to how I would define it is is who we essentially are, which is consciousness. And um, you, so so many of us try to go find our spiritual selves by like going out there and you know, going outside ourselves and trying this new thing or that new thing or whatever. When, you know, if you shift that perspective to that, we already are consciousness coming in through form. You know, that's your incarnating our spirituality through form. It's And being able to access that power, suddenly, you know, we each become instruments of a wonderful joyous song that we're we're making into this ma- amazing symphony orchestra. David, is that something you see maybe changing? Is that, uh, in my, my awareness, I think um, we're all teachers and we're all leaders. And one thing going on is that we're losing outside leadership to, in order to develop our inner leadership. And if we use the term power, I guess it's being conscious of how we use our power to experience ourselves as powerful or powerless or however you want to define it. And are you noticing that at all? That uh, that because because all the good, worthy or uh, people like yourselves or others are going to tell the student or those that come to see them or experience them that it's about yourself. In the individual finding their connection and understanding that. Are you seeing more of that in your work? I think so, yes. I certainly see it in the folks that come to study with me. Um, you know, it's, it's this interesting blend to say the work is about yourself and about you and the world. It's about you and the world. It's about a partnership, really. Mm-hmm. And for for me to be a good partner, I need to be able to stand in my own uniqueness and identity. I need to know what the gifts are that I bring to the partnership. But mm-hmm. I also have to honor and treasure my partner, and that's where love comes in. I mean, we talked about 
I said that separation is not the same as divisiveness, and the thing that makes those two things different is the presence of love. Mm -hmm. Um, If all we have is, well, I feel different from you, and I'm afraid of that, and I have no love, then we have divisiveness. And and whether that divisiveness is between us and other humans, or between us and the natural world, or between us and the subtle world, we're splitting the world up into antagonistic factions. And that's what I feel is the big push right now. It's, it's the, the, the strong push from the realms of spirit to enable us through a variety of means. I mean, it's not going to be just one way of doing it. It's going to be many ways because humanity is so diverse us to begin to to overcome this um, antagonism and adversariality. And I think the interesting phenomenon is that the stronger that push towards love becomes, the more it forces antagonism into the surface where we see it bubbling up in our world in, in a number of ways. But when I look at the people who come to study with me and to honor me with their Um, presence. Uh, Yes, I definitely see people who are more than ready and more than able to begin taking on some new definitions of who they are and who the world is and ready to step into that planetary partnership. Mm, That feels nice. That's nice to know you're seeing that in the community. Oh, I'm, I'm... (laughs) <laughs> I'm fabulously optimistic about humanity <laughs> and about our future. And well, uh, yeah. you wouldn't get that from the news, but fortunately we're not dependent upon the news. The well, news which... is not shaping, uh, no, how do I want to say that? The news does not tell us the whole of our reality. And thank right. heavens for that. It's very it's very filtered and it's very... Uh directionally oriented i find news and so you you have a wonderful way of putting that that it's just part it's not the all of anything well, actually you know david what you said love is forcing antagonism to the surface and i think that's the, you know the news only looks at the surface and oh absolutely you, that's right yeah so if you see it, it may seem more extreme right now but that it it's really that the the thing that is dying is yelling the loudest, you know, and it's uh, the aspect of the ego is yells the loudest as it's diminishing, you know. Um, so that's what I see, you know, when I look at what's going on in Congress in the United States, it's like all the old white male paradigm is, is having a hissy fit and temper tantrum as that aspect is, is diminishing. Um, and it's because this greater love is coming into the world. I mean, you just take a look at what the Pope is doing, and it, it, that's really setting everything else on its ears. And just because Dave is, is an older white male, <laughs> he, he is not part of that. that. He that. is. He is. He's adding into that as in the Pope, and it looks like it's about time for us to start to come back into uh, whatever being present is about. So we want to thank david for that time and he's going to stay with us and when we come back we'll get in we'll we'll have our parting words but everyone now just notice what you're noticing and the relaxation the maybe deeper breath the kind of stillness the sacred we have talked about a lot of things that perhaps you um notice in yourself and we honor all of it and we allow it to just be and as he says it's not about changing it or manipulating it other than being all right with where you are so those are my words not his necessarily but the sentiment i think is there so as you bring your awareness back into that emotional terrain and just notice it now is it a little different i think it has to be And notice the colors on the walls or the objects there or the movie that's running. And just invite yourself back into your heart, physical heart, and feel it beating. And maybe notice what's going on there. Um, There we go. Just track that. And then just bring your awareness back into every day. 
There's a lot of emotional content. I've got some stuff firing up there in the gut that I can feel. So I think people are reorganizing information. And just notice and bring yourself back. There we go. Oh, how nice. What a stretch that was. All right. And we'll, we'll, yeah, there we go. That's very nice. Right. So I'll hold that wonderful space. Um, we have to stop for another commercial break, but stay tuned because we have more to talk about with David Spangler in this uh, new state of grace. Are you ready to take a quantum leap in your life? Joan Newcomb is a conscious mastery coach who empowers you to navigate life from your own inner wisdom using energy techniques. Contact her through her website, joan-newcomb.com, and take conscious mastery of your life today. That's joan-newcomb.com. Would you like a fresh approach to the challenges you're dealing with? Janet Barrett is a subtle energy empath. Feeling the energies present in your myths and language, she offers a supportive, non-judgmental viewpoint. Experience new ways to relate to and release the energies in those stories. Receive a $25 discount on your first session. Email Janet for an appointment at JanetB at JanetAndBeyond.com. Come explore with Janet. New possibilities for a joy-filled life. are listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. To reach our program, please send questions and comments to Conscious with Joan and Janet at gmail.com. That's Conscious with Joan and Janet at gmail.com. Now, back to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. Welcome back. You're listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet, and I'm your host, Joan, along here with Janet, and we're talking with David Spangler about consciousness and incarnational uh, spirituality. And um, so, Janet, um, hmm. we're we're coming we're coming to a close here. Um, actually, I wanted to ask David uh, about the Lorian Association and um, and any other things that are coming up this summer for them. Well, the Lorian Association, yes, that, uh, that's an organization, an educational organization that I helped to found back in 1974. And there's been a, a group of us that have worked together uh, ever since we originally met, many of us originally met at Findhorn when I was the co-director, and, and they were part of the, the management team and the creative team so over the years, we've um, been hosting and promoting uh, spiritual education in a variety of ways. And most of the teaching is done online but that, at the moment, but that's starting to change. In fact, we're right in the middle of a, a big change in our educational programs. So uh, the only thing we have going this summer is an is a, um, event in Boulder, um, and if you go to the Lorian website, which is www.lorian.org, it will have all that information. But um, but there's no other events planned through the summer, but uh, a whole new educational program will be starting up in uh, late August or early September, and we're just in the process of designing that now. I have to to make comment here, uh, David. I'm noticing a little energy sprite, something little person energy, uh, waving. <laughs> so, an, an energy uh, leaving? Did you say waving? It's waving. Oh, weaving. It's yeah, waving. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, that's. And I was thinking, Dave came to mind because I know that's your you know, so much your awareness of things. And uh, sometimes that one can have a diva, diva for uh, uh, whatever. And um, if we were to label this and we were to add that into every, every all our listeners' back pocket, um, what might be there? Can, can you articulate that in any way for us? I'm just curious. You know, I'm, 
I have to apologize. I'm not actually sure I followed you. I, so I should say that I'm partly <laughs> I'm partly deaf, so I, I'm, um, I think I may not have heard everything that you said, and I, I do apologize. Well, so, that's all right. There's could you ask that in a different way <laughs> or ask I, me actually, again? Actually, it's funny because Janet's partially deaf now, too. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Match half I... a deaf with half a deaf, and maybe you get a deaf deaf. I don't know. <laughs> it's a high definition. It's high deaf here. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, anything else you, you'd like to say in close, David? we got just a minute, I think. You know, I just want to wish all of your listeners every blessing in their lives and uh, and to um yeah to say that love is is with them in the world this is a wondrous and delightful place and i hope that they're able to touch into the treasures that it has for them oh i can't get much better than that do you think joan yes that that is lovely thank you so much so much so wonderful yeah. having you today, and um, and uh, so for for those of you who tune tuned in later, you can find out more about David Spangler at uh, both his website, which is davidspangler.com, and more about uh, Lorian at uh, the lorianassociation.com about what's coming up uh, later in August. This and the other there's online classes and and uh, self studies you can do there as well, and. Uh, and just all of David's books, every single one of them, are amazing. So thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so thank much, Thank you, David, folks. I appreciate for, being on. For gracing us. This is just lovely. And uh, we'll let you off into your world. And <laughs> and I, I'm sure it has many textures and layers, too, that thank you so much. And, Joan, what do we need to follow up with, finish up oh, with? Well, we just want to remind folks about this new thing that we're starting as a as a way for our listeners to intimately connect with us, and that's our conscious conference call with Joan and Janet. And it's, we're going to be doing this monthly, but it's our very first one is coming up um, uh, a week from Thursday, which is Thursday, May 28th. Uh, it's 7 p.m. Pacific, I didn't say that earlier, and 10 p.m. Eastern. Um, so if you wish that you could actually be sitting on the couch with us during our, our chats, this is a chance to get up close and personal with us and ask your questions. And we'll be holding it as a conference call, and we'll be recording it for, for the participants as well. And you can email us about that at consciouswithjoanandjanet at gmail.com. And uh, we've also got... Yeah, let's see. So everyone, yeah, did you I have just, something? I totally forgot to tell people about our Facebook page and Twitter. Um, so <laughs> join us on Facebook. Uh, you can find us at Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet, and you can join the group there and join the fun, uh, be on the leading edge of the new things that are going on with us, and also receive notification of when Janet's put out uh, her her weekly newsletter and mine. And you can also follow us on Twitter at Joan and Janet. And you can follow me on Twitter as well, at Joan Newcomb. Um, and you want to remind us about our websites. Websites. I'm JanetAndBeyond.com, and that's all one word spelled out. And you can see what's going on there, and you get a $25 discount for your first session. If you want to do that, you can sign up for my weekly blog, and that comes with uh, a tip sheet. 20 10 top 10 points for enjoying life and it includes all 28 of them so <laughs> <laughs> and um and joan's got her blog and that's adventures in density and it's great she writes great we write totally different because you can so tell Jan, we are yes. two different kinds of my women. website is joan newcomb.com and can you find out all the mysteries and wonders there um and just want to let everyone know that you've been listening to conscious conversations with joan and janet and i'm your host joan newcomb and I'm Janet Barrett, and we just want to remind you that life is worth living and give it everything you got, everybody, as <laughs> David so well does. Give it everything you got. You 
You've been listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. Thanks so much for helping to co-create the show. No matter whether you're tuning in live or listening on demand, you energetically contribute to our collective experience. Joan and Janet love to hear from you and invite you to email your comments and ideas for them to explore each week. Contact them at Conscious with Joan and Janet at gmail.com. Tune in next Wednesday for another great show at 3 p.m. Pacific Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, and 10 p.m. UTC.